at the same time, because I was starting a new company, obviously you have no money. This is what happens when you start a new business. And some of the women that I was meeting at the at the parties were, were dominatrix. And I was learning how much money they were making. And I thought, well, this is brilliant. I like dress, dressing up. I'm a sadist. This is this is perfect. So I was uh, was trained by three different amazing doms, uh, you know, to make sure that she understood all the medical impacts and how to use the equipment properly, how not to damage someone, um, and and there I just moved from there. Then I started from the from the modeling and doing the dominatrix work, to doing online videos. I also ran um, BDSM parties. Uh, in the city where I came from uh, and that's kind of yeah it all just it all just progressed really naturally met lots of wonderful wonderful people who helped hugely and you know advising on what equipment and making introductions and yeah I think I was just very very fortunate um, and and as I said when it's in the blood I guess you just just flows <laughs> so you already were like predisposed to having that kind of dominant personality. So I would imagine, I mean, you called yourself a sadist. So I would imagine that the transition was probably pretty natural for you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I always really enjoyed the, the kind of sadist part, the dressing up part and the, the, the play. I've never been great at humiliation. Uh, mm. Just feel like that's not me. Um, more of a sensual sadist can we be a sensual sadist i think yeah <laughs> yeah well i mean i think we can all agree that you know people who visit bdsm places you know as submissives take pleasure in the pain that they experience right otherwise they wouldn't do it so i think you could definitely say that so what because i know that you know different dominatrixes have different specialties what would you say was your specific specialty ball busting <laughs> so tell us a little bit more specifically about that and then you also talked about how you were trained you know to not cause like actual serious medical issues so how do does one engage in ball busting and not send somebody to the hospital i will be very honest when i went through my training ball busting was not part of that training it just kind of happened and i realized how much i enjoyed it um and worked with um a particular male who is very well known online and videos are very well watched so once i worked with him and he said that apparently i was the the best ball buster in all the world and he traveled the world and been kicked many times uh and after that i just had <laughs> so many so many emails but you know the problem is that most of the, I think for a lot of people with, with ball busting, it's a fantasy. That it's, it's, it's not something that they can actually take. So, yeah. you know, the emails and most of them are, you know, can you castrate me? Can you kick me so hard that I'll never be able to have children? Um, and, and all these things that are just so against uh, morale uh, or my morals. Uh, that there were there were very few people that I I, I could work with, and um, yeah, it's, it's it's an odd it's an odd fetish in that way in that way that um, that I think it's something that's fetishized and fantasized about, but that the the, the follow through is not as um, uh, yeah, as they would want or what that they can actually do. So it's an interesting one. Yeah, I had a conversation um, a few episodes ago with Tina Horn, actually, and she we talked about cannibalism and the cannibalism fetish, which obviously is something that you cannot follow through with. But, you know, people have this fetish around the idea of being eaten and consumed. So, like, how do you play to that without actually eating somebody? So... Um, it's interesting, these fetishes, right? Because you have to find a way to indulge people without causing irrevocable harm. Um, exactly. But I just, I feel like 
I, I just wanted to get you a mug that says world's best ball buster because that just feels like, do you not have one of those or a shirt no, or something? <laughs> but I, I think you should really have one. I think uh, for Christmas, that might be, I might, you might get a little gift from me. I would love that. <laughs> love it. And I'm, and I'm just thinking of like the imagery and the graphics that could be, <laughs> that could go alongside the text. <laughs> Oh yeah. I mean, so um, sadly I'm not a graphic designer, so perhaps we might have to collaborate on this. I mean, I don't know, maybe it could be a whole new line of Holly Randall HRU mugs, <laughs> but, uh, I just, I don't know. I just thought of that, you know, with father's day, mother's day coming up like world's best ball buster. <laughs> it's just, uh, so good. <laughs> oh my God. Love it. 